Hi, today I'm going to paint this zebra. I'm going to change the background uh, a little bit and have less vegetation and more sky. The actual um, drawing has the sort of horizon line about a third of the way down, which is a nice position. I've masked out the legs with pink masking fluid, it doesn't matter what colour, but I've just masked them out so that uh, as we proceed it's going to be easy to preserve the white of the legs. Um, the paints I'm going to use are these. If you want to pause you know, the cam your video and write these down, that's up to you. They're all uh, Winsor & Newton colours and they're all artist professional quality paints. I never use student colour or hobby craft colour because it <coughs> just doesn't work. Watercolour needs to be the best you can get. Um, also the paper. It's Arsh Hot Pressed, £90 or 200 GSM, and that's 100% cotton. It's a lovely paper to paint on. <clears throat> okay, so what I'm going to do is start by taking a big uh, one and a half inch flat brush, and I'm going to wet the whole area, the whole painting. This takes a little bit of time, and so I'll just put the camera on pause while I do that. But basically you need to saturate the whole painting, edge to edge, top to bottom, including the zebra. And the only thing that will stay dry will be the legs that I've masked out. Okay, so I'll be back in a minute. Okay, I've just soaked the entire sheet of paper and I'm going to try and show you. Can you see that lovely just faint sheen of moisture all over the paper? That's perfect now for dropping in our first washes. It's not soaking wet and nor is it damp. If it was damp there'd be no shine on the paper. This is key to doing a good wet into wet watercolour. So I've got it nice and moist, it's evenly distributed and just for the sake of it going to wet the extreme corners because the corners always dry out quicker than the rest of it one more time before I start adding the first washes for the sky and the ground okay so that's nice and moist but as I say it's not running with water so we have got some control okay so the first wash I'm going to apply is some raw sienna if I just zoom in a little bit on that So raw sienna, quite a dilute wash. This is going to be the palest colour in the sky. And I'm going to paint it right through the zebra because we'll be patting colour off the zebra in a minute. So don't worry about going through the body. What we want is clear broad strokes passing from edge to edge in the painting. Don't stop short and sort of, you know, keep your painting crouched in. Make it expand past those borders. It has more power then. So that's quite faint as you can see. Then the next colour to come on is some Rose Madder. And I'm just applying that again in different uh, levels of bands and streaks. Now I'm moving to another part of the palette because I just want some French ultramarine blue and I'm going to tone it down a little bit with some with some burnt umber, just a little corner of my brush going in there. Burnt umber just takes the blue down a little bit so that it's not so, actually that's gone down a bit too far now so bring it back, some more blue. And I'm going to pop a little tiny speck of Windsor Violet in there as well. And this I'm going to add nearer the top of the sheet. Sky is usually darker as it, it goes higher up. But again, I'm going to uh, drag some, some more repeats of the blue further down the painting. Okay, and at this point, I'm just going to let it all run 
So I'm tipping the board at about 90 degrees. Just let that all run and soften. Then let it run and soften back the other way. If I just zoom out. This just takes away all my brush strokes and softens all of the colours in with each other a bit more naturally. At this point, everything is moist and I want to now lift out the colour um, that's in the body of the zebra. So I'm just going to pat it with some dry tissue just to reclaim a bit more of the white of the paper. We won't get it all back, but that's okay because then the zebra won't look too cut out and stuck on. I'm just keeping some more um, definition ready for when we come to do the zebra. If I zoom in now, you can see. It will continue to bleed a little bit because everything's still moist, um, but that's okay. We can sort of just keep an eye on that and if it creeps in a bit too far, just come with your tissue and mop it up. Okay, also what we could add now, just to break up the sky, um, are a few little twists of some clouds perhaps. This is a slightly damp piece of tissue. So I'm just going to roll it into a rough twist. And just press it on. Maybe take some cloud shapes out. They're quite faint. And running, be running through and behind the zebra. Just I put some obstacles in. You see, um, for the next wash that I'm going to run into the sky to work around. So these dry patches will be a sort of barrier to the paint. And I just want to add one final bit of work. To the sky, so more French ultramarine blue and a bit more Windsor violet, Actually, and a tiny bit of burnt umber just for a bit of contrast in the sky. So I'm going to just add that purposely um, again, so cutting through. The zebra, we'll have to wipe it out again, but that's okay. And then where there are some hard uh, lines, I'm just going to soften those with a moist brush to allow them to bleed. There's a hard line there, so I'm just softening that. Very hard line there, so I'll just soften in between those two. And let's just Zoom out and let that all run. Actually, I want to go through uh, behind the zebra's head there because that looks a bit uncomfortable. So I'm just going to run that, run that through there. Let that, let that flow. So where the zebra. Um, zoom in. In this area of blue on the face, I'm just going to moisten that so that it'll be easier to pat and lift off, which I'll do now, just to reclaim that head, the face area. Okay, so we've got some, just a bit more interest in the, in the sky. And actually, there's quite a big swathe of blue going through under the belly there. So I, I want to get rid of that because the belly will have a, a warm cast to it eventually. So I'll just lift that blue out now because I don't really want that there. So this is just to show you that you can paint through a subject. As long as you wet the subject, you can paint through it to do a sky, you know, you haven't got to mask out the whole thing. Um, and then you can lift off colour with a dry tissue. I masked off the legs because they're long and spindly and they're quite difficult 
to keep the paint out from the paint seeps back into these narrow areas quite fast so I just saved myself a bit of stress by masking out the legs. So again I'm going to tip my board. Can you see there's still that moist sheen on there so everything is still moist. This is the joy of really wetting your paper beforehand because it gives you a lot more work in time, a lot more time to think, a lot more time to you know correct, lift off colour, put on colour. It's much more forgiving than painting the sky on dry paper because every mark you make then will have a hard edge and then you've got to soften it. So if you want to have soft flowing skies then I'd suggest wetting your paper first. I'm getting a hard edge there which I don't really like the look of so I'm going to come along with a slightly moist and I mean slightly it's just had it's been dipped in water and then flicked so there's just a bit of moisture in the tips and I'm just going to rotate into that zoom in a bit more rinse regularly flick the water off rotate and just soften that cloud because it was getting too much of a hard edge there I'm just going to lift out another cloud to balance that one. This is a thirsty brush. I've wet it and I'm drying it with a flannel and then pressing it in the paper. Wet it, dry it, keep pressing it in and it, you can lift out quite a bit of colour. That cloud I feel is just stopping annoyingly short of the edge of the paper so I'm just going to take it over the edge. Again, for that feeling of, you know, that the borders aren't limiting us in the painting. So I'm just pushing it out, making it an irregular size. I'm happy with that. Okay, so I'm happy with this guy. Right, so at this stage... Yeah, some more of the blue sky has bled into the mane of the zebra. So again, just press in there and take a bit more of that blue out. Okay, so at this stage, <clears throat> I'm going to let everything dry. Okay, the painting is bone dry now. Uh, I let it dry naturally and um, finished it off with a hairdryer. I wouldn't recommend that, but if you, if you can leave it dry naturally every time, that's best, because the heat does tend to sort of kill the vibrancy of the pigment in the watercolour, I find, anyway. So um, it's best to leave it dry naturally. What I'm going to do now is wear it just, from just above the horizon line and all of the foreground and get the foreground colour in. At this stage, though, I'm just going to rub out some pencil lines just take them down a little bit so they're not so obvious I know roughly where my horizon line is if you don't like pencil lines in this is a good time to rub them out if you're not bothered um, then just leave them as they are I'm also just going to diminish the pencil lines around my shadow that's being cast by the zebra because I think they're a bit hard so I'm just breaking them up with my eraser, push them off. Okay, so I'm wetting this area again now. So very lightly, I'm just wetting into part of the sort of distant skyline that I've uh, done, where it comes down to the ground, because I'm going to pop in some just soft, uh, distant bushes and things in there. But I'll put those on once I've put the foreground in. <clears throat> so the foreground colour would be a mix of raw sienna <clears throat> and uh, that cadmium scarlet. So I'll just brush that back and forth so I can zoom out and position that a bit better. Okay, so and we'll have some cadmium yellow deep in there as well. 
So more of the same again. So it's raw sienna, cadmium scarlet, and then the cadmium yellow deep. I'm not over mixing it on the palette because I wanted to mix a little bit on the paper. So this is a lot warmer now than the distant, than the sky, obviously. That's forming a hard edge along there. So come along with a moist, I've got a size six round brush, which I've just wetted and flicked off the excess moisture. And if I run it and rotate it, I'm pressing the hairs quite firmly on the paper so that the hairs are making contact as I'm dislodging that hard line. Needs to be done again, it's still a bit hard, so rotate rotate this moistened brush into that passage of colour and it just softens it off a bit more. It's not so hard. So now to put in the sort of distant bushes and things, I'm going to blow them off, blow that colour off. So let's have the cadmium scarlet, some cadmium yellow deep. And raw sienna again. So I've got a peachy orange colour there. So into that, opposite that on the colour scale is, is blue. So I'm just going to mix in all the blue that I've got on the palette there. And that's dulling it down a little bit. It needs a bit more blue. So more French ultramarine blue. And some wounds of violet. So that it'll push the colour make it appear further away and more distant and then I'm just going to pat in some suggestion of undergrowth and bushes <coughs> along there again I've got a hard edge <coughs> excuse me I've got a hard edge there so I'll just soften that and small then I'm just going to drag a line just to key those bushes in to the ground a bit more. I need to cast shadow now from the actual zebra and I'm going to make that <coughs> more violet in colour so let's just clean my palette off a bit, it's getting a bit mucky. So for the shadow colour I'm going to use cadmium scarlet Some cadmium yellow deep. Let's add some winds of violet into that. Yeah, that's a nice rich colour. Okay. So cadmium yellow deep and winds of violet are more or less opposite each other on the colour wheel. So they make a nice grey, believable sort of shadow. And I'm gonna let that touch up into the masked out hooves of the zebra so that it'll be uh, believable there. Then I'm going to have a big foreground shadow in the same colour just to keep the viewer's eye in the painting. Okay, these bushes could do with a bit of that colour as well so I'm just going to add a few mm, brush strokes of that colour in on top of what I'd done already. Then I'm going to let all of that run. Can you see there's still, still moisture in there? Just let it all run for a few seconds. Zoom out. And that'll soften everything. There's some paint back in up there alongside the masking fluid, so I'll just tip it back the other way and let it run out that way. Give it a few minutes for the paint to gain momentum and it starts creeping along and uh, spidering along, feathering along and gives a nice effect. And as you can see, this shadow now is softening quite a lot. I mean, it's holding its shape, but the edges now are becoming nice and soft and are keying in to the warm, sort of, the warmth colour of the foreground. If a shape is changing in a way that you don't like, this stage and just come along again with a moist brush. I've moistened it and I've 
really shaken off the excess droplets. And now I can touch in to an area, and maybe I'll just take it right off the page. Just help it along a little bit further. Because it was having a sort of rounded shape, which I didn't like. And then back the other way. See how that's looking now. Okay, then what I think I'd like to do now is lift out maybe sort of a heat shimmer on the horizon line. So I'm going to use a big inch and a half flat brush, which I've moistened and now I'm drying. So this is thirsty brush again. So I'm reforming it using my fingers like scissors, keeping the shape nice and sharp. Okay, and then I'm going to press that in and give it a slight wiggle as I'm going along. So that sort of, you know, gives a um, delineation, but a soft one between those distant, very distant and soft hazy bushes and could suggest a little bit of heat shimmer on the ground. And I think I'll call that. And we'll have some maybe strokes of white lifted out here and there in the foreground, just for a bit of contrast. I'm just pressing that brush in and lifting out some colour. Okay, and I'm going to let that dry completely. Right, so the painting is bone dry again. The, fo the foreground area is all dry. And now it's safe to rub off the masking fluid that's dried. Always make sure your paper is bone dry before you try and rub off the masking fluid, otherwise it can tear your paper. So obviously the legs are a lot whiter than the rest of the body. That doesn't matter too much because we'll be putting some shadow areas on the legs as we progress and anyway the black and white stripes will really sort of detract your eye from any difference between the white legs and the main body. Um, before I start wetting the inside of the zebra to put the shadows on and start developing form I just want to show you how I sort of help my eyes sometimes to see shadows that's my original uh, reference photo and then what I did is I put it into Adobe Photoshop, took all the colour out and then I posterised it down to just three values. So as you can see you've just got white, black and then a tiny little bit of grey, so three values and by doing that you really see the shadow areas. I mean that leg is completely in shadow, half of that one is, all of that one is in shadow, part of that one is, obviously under the chest and the belly and under the neck is in shadow. Then there's a cast shadow from the ear onto the face and similarly from that ridge of the eye there's a cast shadow onto the side of the nose and obviously there's a highlight there where the sun is hitting the rump then there's the shadow there where that part of the body curves away out of the light. So all this does, especially if you're a beginner in art, it helps you to start getting your eye to be very sensitive to where light turns into dark, whether it turns abruptly or whether it's a soft turn, a soft edge. And as you become more and more aware, it becomes more easy, sorry, it becomes easier to place the darks and the lights and that's what makes something appear 3D as opposed to 2D on a sheet of paper and that's what we're always after. Okay so I'm just going to start wetting the inside of the zebra now to prepare it for the rest of the work. So I've got a size 6 brush 
and I'm going to wet the whole inside of the zebra. So I'm taking care of my outline and being very careful there. I want to make sure I don't lose the outline. So a size 6 brush for now. But when I get to the legs, I'll probably switch to a size 3. So I'm just going to wet the whole of the inside of the zebra and I'll put the camera on pause while I do that to save uploading time, okay? Okay, it's taken me about 5 to 8 minutes to wet the zebra inside. Just to give you an idea of time, it's a bit fiddly and you've got to go slowly around the small areas. Um, but it's all moist now. If I zoom out and just see if I can catch the... Um, can you see there's the sheen on the zebra's head there and all over the body? That's the, t that's the condition the paper needs to be in now to drop the, uh, the shadow colours in. So I'm just going to zoom back in. A bit clearer. Okay. So the shadows, as I showed you earlier, I'm going to follow the, the markings that I can see here. You have definite shadows there, there, there. I'm using this as a sort of road map for the for the general shadows. So my shadow colour will be French ultramarine blue and some burnt umber. Just a mid-grey colour that I want on the zebra's body. That's a bit strong, perhaps, so uh, I'll actually add a bit more brown before adding some more water, then that will dilute it down a bit more. Let's, let's add some more water just to make that paler. That's the sort of grey I'm after. I'm going to drop that in now, following those shadow patches that I could see on that black and white that I just showed you. The paint will spread and that's okay. We just want it to go on softly and have blurred edges now. So the whole of this back leg is in shadow and part of this one. So I'm using a bit less of the shadow colour on this right hand leg and leaving some white of the paper. So I'm using a size 3 brush and really hugging that left hand side. It's gone a bit dry there so it's not flowing as much. I'll leave that for now. Then under the, the four legs there's a lovely shadow under there. And all under the muzzle and the jaw and the left hand side of the neck, there's a shadow there. And in fact, most of the front of this area is in shadow and all of this leg is dark. I'm very carefully trying to blot out as much of the, the very fine white outline that you'll see from where we rubbed out the masking fluid because I don't want the zebra to look like a cut out thing. Okay, and this right hand side of this leg has some shadow in it, but the right hand side is paler. So the left hand side is where I want to put this grey. We'll tidy up any ragged ends that you can see there as we go along. Okay, so now we're hopefully starting to develop a bit of form. Then on the face there was that cast shadow from this big ear because the light is coming from the right hand side. So this is casting a shadow down onto the onto the face and the the sort of 
ridge of the sort of bone of the skull above the eye is casting quite a big shadow onto the side of the nose. And then there's a shadow on the left hand side of that ear as well. Yeah, and this ear will have shadow on it too. And the left hand side of the face will have some shadow. Okay, now the paint is starting to separate. You can see the brown and the blue are separating, which I think uh, is a nice effect. Okay, so there's some basic shadow colour going on the zebra. Actually, I think I'll make this one a bit high, higher. See, mine's a little bit small. So I'm going to travel up a bit higher and a bit further along the body and then taper it away. And I'll just bleed that away. Okay, so we've got some shadow colour on. There's a little highlight there. Can you see that highlight on the back leg? I've missed that. So I'll just use a thirsty brush. A thirsty half inch, no quarter inch brush and just lift that out as quick as I can to get that highlight back and it, it rests so on the bulge of the kneecap of the near leg so I'll need to tidy that up. So rinse often and use this brush like an eraser and get your highlight back. Right, and now I'm going to let that whole zebra dry. The, uh, the inside of the zebra now is totally bone dry. We've got this sort of skeleton shadow uh, colouring going on at the moment. So the next job is to now add all of the black and white stripes. Well, basically, I'm just adding the black stripes because I'm leaving the white of the paper to do the rest of the, the work for me. So the black colour would just be French ultramarine blue. I'm going to mix up quite a big puddle of this so that I hopefully have enough to do the whole uh, animal. So lots of French ultramarine blue. It's quite liquid as well. And then some burnt umber. Give us a rich black. And it doesn't matter if, you know, partly the brown shows through or partly the blue shows through because it's, it's you know, this is near to black as we can manage and it looks quite nice when it's not a dead black from a tube. This is nice because it's a brown and a blue mixed together. So I'm making it dilute enough to flow on. So I'm going to start with the tiny markings on the face and again when when you're doing these don't you know worry about them being exactly the same shape basically we just want it to suggest the lovely black and white markings that are on the zebra And put in the markings that are in the mane as well at this stage. If you find that you have trouble seeing where you've drawn the lines, just redraw re them to help you put the markings in accurately.
As they come down the zebra's body, they seem to get a little bit fatter. Don't worry that this looks a bit ghostly at the moment, at this stage, because we're going to be adding some more stronger shadows once we've got all of these markings on. And we'll be adding some more colour to the body as well to mimic, uh, sorry, to echo the colours in the sky and in the ground. And when we do that, it will unify uh, these colours that we're putting on that, the, the markings that we're putting on now. Sometimes you're not sure if you're painting a black bit or a white bit, so just refer back to your image and be sure where you are. As I'm putting the colour on, I'm aware that sometimes I'm pressing the brush a little bit harder and leaving a stronger, pass it, a stronger mark. And then other times I'm being more light with it. Also, I'm just going to randomly go back in to some of the marks I've made already and just add some extra marks on top, which will give a little bit of variety in the main shape. So already, hopefully, it starts adding a little bit of contrast so that even the markings aren't flat, completely flat, okay? So this is quite a big one and it tapers away to nothing. Okay, so I'm going to put the camera on hold because I'm just going to do this all over the zebra. And just before I go one more, you know, another splotch of darker colour into this mark that I've just made for contrast. Keeps everything a little bit more alive, more interesting for the viewer to see. As I work down the zebra, I'm just adding in a little bit more burnt uh, umber to the mix because the markings as they go down the legs they get finer and they also get a bit paler. So I'm also going to move to a smaller brush because the size 3 is a bit thick now. So I'm using a, a zero. Actually, yeah, a zero which is nice and fine. Which will enable me to get finer markings on the leg. So that's much easier now. I'm just trying to keep them random in size and in position. So there's some little delicate ones there. They're coming at a slight curve. So I'm just going to work uh, like that. Don't 
the ones on this leg are not very visible at all there's just a few around by the knee and there's just a few on this one by the ankles So making some thicker and some thinner. So now we have some more markings on the legs. I think what I'll do now is add the, the muzzle. I'll just zoom in on the face. I need to put some dark, this, this, this blue-black mix on the nose because that is all dark. sort of fades away so I'll just lay the colour on for now and then I'll show you how to blend it up. So there's some colour on and with a size 3 brush that I'm rinsing, flicking and I've just got a tiny bit of moisture in the hairs. I'll just touch into that and just drag it out a few millimetres and that blends the darkness of the muzzle into the face very gradually. And I need to put more shadow on the sort of forehead and on this left hand side. So I'm adding that shadow now. And it goes up into the ear and this time we'll have a, a harder shadow on top of the soft shadow we did early on. And then yeah, this side is in shadow as well. And I'm just going to add a few more markings to join everything together a bit more. Actually, I think that looks too hard, so just soften that with a moist brush and soften that one. Then under the jaw, I want that much darker there. So I'm going to redefine the shadows that we put on earlier on, just to redefine the shape. And I am going to soften all of that with a moist brush, just blend that in. And similarly, up into the face, let's blend that in ever so slightly. And hopefully now the face is starting to come to life a bit more. I'll just zoom out and start working the shadows now. Down this leg again, because it is almost black. Uh, in my black and white photograph, it's, it's practically got no... Uh, tonal contrast at all so I'm just going to add more grey to it because it's it's the leg that's in the greatest shadow and it goes down and there behind this slightly more sunlit leg but there was a little bit of shadow there as well just on that sort of rounded part of his body a shadow there and coming around under the knee joint there's a bit of a curve and shadow there and under the ankle there's a bit of a shadow under that and then that tapers away so let's put a shadow under there there and the hooves we'll put those in now Me 
to soften that a little bit. It's a bit hard on that one. Soften that up there. Okay, so the next shadow area is under the back leg. So let's put that same colour in. And it sort of curves around like that. And that shadow defines this leg to the right. So the shadow, I'll go all down there. And I'm going to blend this away and try and keep that highlight. Remember that I lost earlier on? So I'll just drag it down with a moist brush. Drag it down all on this left hand side. Soften it a little bit. Down to there and then the shadow cuts in around that curved part of this knee on the other leg. There's a lot more dark on this left hand side as well. I'm going to leave some little white uh, flecks there to show some light bounce coming in from the right. And there is a shadow on that leg and it goes under the curve of the knee and very finely. And then under the curve of the ankle again. And there's the hoof. So I just need to soften some spots on this leg. Let's soften that curve up into the knee. And let's soften the ankle down and above. Okay. There's a lovely shadow there behind that foreleg, and I'm just dragging the brush and tapering that shadow away. Then there was the shadow up there into the haunches that needs to be in. Soften that. Right. So finally at this stage what I'd like to do is now introduce some reflected light from the sky and from the ground. So the sky had that French ultramarine blue colour. So I'm going to add some of that French ultramarine blue, not too strong, and a little bit of Windsor violet as well. Okay, and that sort of is roughly the same colour as the sky. Okay, and I'm going to add that. to the back, where the, the, the light bounce from the sky would be catching his, his back there. And similarly in the tips of his mane, if I put some in there, and on the tops of his, of his ear as well. Shall I push that in a bit more, it looks a bit hard. Let's just chip it in. That sort of helps complete the mane a little bit more. Okay, and uh, actually I'll make it a bit stronger. Let's just go a bit, just a bit stronger. It's best to go softly and hesitantly rather than end up with, you know, a colour that's too strong. 
okay and there'd be some of it on that part of the leg yeah. wherever the the animal's leg uh, animal's body curves out to catch the light from above and pop, pop in a little bit of this purpley blue on and then I'll just soften it off with this large brush okay so it soon softens back in and it will dry paler anyway so that's giving it a bit of the purple hue from the sky so let's introduce some of the cadmium scarlet and cadmium yellow deep from the ground as well so some cadmium scarlet i want to keep it roughly the same strength that 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 oh, actually it was raw sienna that the ground is now and i added a little bit of cadmium yellow deep and then i added a little bit of the winds of violet just to soften it down yeah so there's that color again which is similar in color to the ground and then let's pop that in to warm up under the belly and under the shadow there in the thigh and running up under the front of the chest there that'll be getting the light bounce from the ground as would under the jaw so these will all have a little bit of the orange colour on the underneath of the kneecaps where it's facing downwards they'd have a little splash of that orange hue as well that's a bit hard there so i'm just going to break that edge up make it a bit irregular okay so if i just zoom in on what i've just painted you can see I've still got some little patches of white showing through for this for the fur for the white fur finally i just want to add a much stronger color on the ground so i'll go for cadmium yellow cadmium scarlet that's too much cadmium scarlet so start a new spot cadmium yellow cadmium scarlet raw sienna and some of that windsor violet I need more winds of violet because I'm just trying to match the shadow colour that's under the zebra. I'm just going for a stronger cast shadow now on top of this softer one that we put in earlier. That's much stronger in there. Okay. And I'm actually going to use some of that with some French ultramarine blue to really darken the hooves because they are black so let's get those in and then they'll bleed in a little bit more into the shadow as well and let that touch into the paint And then with some of that strong colour, I'm going to redefine some of the markings, say here. So this then picks up the sort of burnt um, ground colour.
and wherever you've lost um, some of these dark markings they can just be strengthened here and there not all over because it'll look too contrived just here and there gives it a bit of a it pops the colour out a bit more and I'm just putting the nostril in there and darkening the eye a little bit and then with the side of my brush I'm going to just drag in places just to add a bit more texture for the mane and the mane comes up around the head like that so again I'm just holding my brush almost parallel to the paper making some tufted marks in there So finally I'd forgotten to put the tail in so I'm just going to use some French ultramarine blue and some burnt amber for the tail and uh, that needs to be done uh, quite pale I think because otherwise it will be too eye catching so just keep it simple and hook it into the body. And I'm just going to carry on now adding a bit more shadow to the left hand side of the muzzle which would be much darker. Just soften that off. And I think we could go on refining and refining. I'm just going to soften a tiny little bit the bottom of that fresh shadow I put on. I'm just working it with a slightly moist brush just to dislodge the paint a little bit more. And I think we'll stop there. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this demo. If you've got any questions or comments, you can put them in the box below. Or you can email me at eastwitching at hotmail.com. That's in the description as well. Okay, thanks for watching.